Okay, today I'm going to be doing a video to kind of better explain modular design and the importance of. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible at the beginning, then I'll go into the explanation. So first thing that I do is I make a player scale uh, based on whatever the game engine I'm importing in. I want to make sure I know what the scale of the player is properly so then I can build my pieces around that. That's very, very important because if you don't do that and you make all this stuff, you may not make it to scale properly. So the scale in uh, Raven Shield, Rainbow Six Three, their scale for their player um, is 192 Unreal units is the height. Uh, 130 is eye level, okay? Um, and then they have like a prone and crouched version as well. Um, so what I'm going to do real quick is we're going to go over here and take a look. So as you can see, standing, 192, width, 78, which would also be, you know, breadth as well. Um, and an eye level 130. Okay, so this is just the bounding box around the player, but where the camera is going to be from what you're seeing is 130. So, why is that important? Well, if you want to think about how you're going to make walls, for instance, if you want your uh, characters to be able to use their guns over a wall while standing, you want to make sure that where you know where the eye level is, you kind of want to come down a few units, obviously, to get to like the mid area and where they'd be holding the gun. And just make it a little lower than that. Now, I like to do about 120, 124. Um, again, this is the height for crouched. Uh, so, again, when they're crouched, they're actually almost at eye level, right? Their bounding box is. And here it is for prone. And so, you might have to test this out to kind of really get a good feel in engine. But once you meet that, uh, that sweet spot where you can stand, have your gun over, uh, but you're basically, for the most part, you're concealed, right? And if you crouch, you're going to be completely concealed by whatever wall you're behind. And in a game like Rainbow Six, you definitely want that. So this is basically what I base my measurements off of. Now, this is an old map, uh, old website that's no longer up. They actually have this on ModDB. You can download the old website and all of the um, every other part here that you're going to need to understand. But for now, this is basically what I go by. And these are just recommendations. OK, this is what they basically say. However, this is fact. This is the, the player, okay? So again, they go one unit equals one metric centimeters, and that's what I have set up in 3DS Max. So just to make sure of that, I'll show you quick. See? Now, you can do custom two and have one centimeter, but I've noticed, it, at least it seems in this version, it's a little bit off versus when I do this. Um, it could be a bug. It could just be an oddity within the Unreal Editor itself, but it took me a while to finally get this to work. Um, now, over here, same thing. One unit equals one centimeter. All set, right? Then you want to click these on, the snaps. Depending on which one you're going to use, you may or may not need these on. Right-click, grid and snap settings. I like to use these three, but you may have to use other things depending on what you're doing. Um, again, I would say kind of mess around with this, test it out. And what you're going to see right here, see how that's uh, locking to all those? That's because I have grid points on. Same thing with pivots, right? When you select a model, you're going to get this little symbol here. And the whole thing is going to turn yellow because it's on the pivot, right? So then vertex, what about that? So if I take the, the pivot off, it doesn't really do that anymore. But if I go here, see, it locks to each vertex. Now, if I were to take off grid points, can't do anything else. But oh, look, as soon as I hit the model, right? So that's what I mean. You got to mess around with these to see what does what. Um, I also set up my grid spacing. Uh, every one square, smaller square, is eight centimeters. And then the bigger squares, which is in between these kind of dark gray lines, will be 16 of these eight centimeter squares. Okay. And I do this because number one, power of two is how they, they uh, measure things in the old Unreal editors. And number two, since I'm going to be making something a little bigger than the player, I want to start off at eight instead of four. Now you can do four and then have every major lines, uh, every eight, uh, it, it's still going to fit. However, you kind of want to stick to one measurement when you're making certain models. Uh, it's just good practice. However, if it can still fit, obviously using the power of two. And even if you make smaller squares, like for instance, this eight centimeter square was cut up into four, right? You could still fit it. It's just going to take a little bit more because you're moving a smaller, you know, amount of space. And this is the same uh, kind of concept when you use it in Unreal Editor here. You will be able to do the same thing. So as long as you stay to the power of two, you should be fine. 
So basically that's that. I have the grid set up. I have the unit set up. I've already got my player scale. Now you're probably wondering, okay, so how do we make these models and, and piece them together? All right, so let me hide that real quick and I'll show you something I've already made here. So again, it's the same concept. I, I build it onto the grid. I snap it to the grid, make sure the grid lines are matching and all that. Now for posts, like say this is a fence post, the pivot automatically should be at the bottom and the center. And the reason I say that is because that's going to be a middle piece where two other pieces join in or four other pieces join to, depending on how you do this. Um, so you want this to be in the center. Um, you could use this and move it to the side, but it just makes more sense for these types of pieces to do it, the pivot in the center. Now, walls like this, I would change the pivot to a vertice um, because it's just easier to snap together that way. That's just my experience. Now, you may have a different preference but I like to kind of stick it to where it's going to work best for me. Another thing, work non-destructively, use layers. Don't, you know, right-click, blah, 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 convert. Also, another thing that I'm kind of making a mistake on, so you all know it's okay to make mistakes, try to select everything with the select tool, not the move tool. You could warp your model if you're picking, like, vertex or anything like that and move it, not realize that you're doing it. Um, so you want to make sure that you have this to select everything. The moment you want to move anything, that's when you go here. And as soon as you're done, click this. Just make a habit of it. If you have to do repetition constantly to get this, you know, as a, as a habit, do it. Trust me, you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble. So now what I'm going to do here, this is edit poly. Um, you know, even though I added that there, it is making it that. And I don't have to collapse it. So if I have to make changes, I can do it uh, by going to the layer below. But right now we go under hierarchy, effect pivot only. As you can see, now I'm going to use that. See, and then it's only going to affect the pivot. Bam, right? And the reason I do this is because it makes it easier to help center it to this as well. Obviously, we know it's about four squares across. So if we move this like over here on accident, oh shoot, what do I do? Oh, oh hold on. See how it's already gravitating towards where it was? And that's how you're going to take care of that, you know, modular problem where they're not fitting right. As you can see, it clearly fits. And it's going to be the same process in the uh, editor. These will be the right size and everything, so don't worry about it. Now, another thing I'd like to point out, when you're doing modular design, uh, optimization is key. It's the whole point of why you're even doing it, right? So you don't want to do it, um, I hate to say it, half-ass. You want to make sure you do it properly. So what do you, what do you think I mean by that? Well. Let's say that we're not going to, well, I just made the <laughs> cardinal sin there. Um, you want to make sure you get all of these faces that you're not going to see. You want to delete those. And this is just for the sake of optimization. Now, don't worry about how that was right next to this model. I only have this selected as far as this understands. So it doesn't matter if I select that. It's not going to. If I select this, it will work, right? So I do that to optimize my pieces, but also it helps with when you're texturing, you have way more UV space to use. So if, if nothing else, just keep that in mind. If you want more detail on your models, the more faces that are on your model, the more space it's taking up in the UV space. When you delete them, you don't have to worry about it. So when you unfold or do anything like that, you'll have as much UV space to use for texture resolution and density. So keep that in mind. And the same thing I would do over here, Right. And the only thing that I'm probably going to do on this one is delete the bottom. Let me get down to edit poly. Here, polygon. Now, because you're never going to see it, right? You'll see these sides in the top, but you're not going to see the bottom unless you're doing like a post that's going to fall over. Then that would probably be the only time you ever keep bases and stuff on the bottom. So, there's that, okay? And it's the same process with anything you make. As long as you build it according to the unit and grid settings, you should be fine, even if it's round, even if it's organic. Because what you can do, um, let's say you make like an organic shape that's round. It doesn't really have like a, a symmetry to it, but you want to make this a part of like some modular set, okay? Um, there are some games, uh, I think like Scorn, for instance, it's a really weird game. They use a lot of like bones and like kind of gigorous kind of, you know, art. And but they still use modular design. You're probably thinking, well, how do they do that? Very simple. They create the base models, right? They they keep those if they're smart, 
they then make the detailed models in ZBrush, bring it back in, right? But then what they'll do is they'll understand that with all the snaps and everything like that, you could also cut, right? You can cut through models. And so they will fit on the grid. So no matter how it looks, you can sit there and make something look really detailed as long as you cut it with symmetry and do the same thing like I was showing you with like pivots or vertices, whatever's going to work best for you, it will work. It'll come right back together with no issue. So don't worry about that. Um, you should be fine if you just keep this this concept in your head. So basically, that's that, right? So I have made this wall um, this size because, again, I'm going by the dimensions of what the developers are saying based on character uh, size. And if my character wanted to hide behind this but still have his gun out, that would be around the area uh, where that would be possible. Um, this is obviously up to eye levels. I think it's like 130 or something like that. So again, I try to keep it a little lower. And what I'll do to make sure that this is the right measurement, uh, you want to go into the game, import the models, and test them out, right? And so if your character can walk up to it and the gun's right over it, but you're still pretty concealed, if you have to get one of your other characters to go over there and do that, or if you have another person that maybe can test your map out, they can walk over to it and show you where the gun is, those are the kind of practices you might want to get used to as well to make sure that your model pieces are indeed working as intended. Um, so that's that. Now I'm going to show you in here what I mean. Now I don't have the pieces in here uh, because you pretty much already understand that as long as this grid matches 3ds Max, what I just showed you is still going to apply in this. But what I wanted to show you was the player scale. Now this character is a little bit taller, okay, uh, a little bit bigger than intended, only because it's the matinee uh, version, like for cinematics and things like that. So it's probably going to be a little bigger. So let's say that I drop this size down a little bit. The point is, right here, this is a BSP brush, and this is the kind of thing that you do in the older editor where you're creating walls and floors and things like that. And for fine detail, you'd probably bring in 3D models, right? It's not like Unreal Engine 4 or 5 where basically everything could just be a 3D model. Um, so the older game, this is kind of what you'd have to do. Now, this being a BSP brush has the same dimensions as the developers have mentioned, okay? And this being a 3D model that I've imported is the same dimensions as this because I went by what they told me to. So now that I've created a 3D model, I've created a BSP, it re you know represents the scale, um, but also the bounding box around the character because no character is going to be in a T-pose like that. And they're going to be a little bit slouched over. That is perfect, right? So let me show you exactly what I mean here. Okay, so you see this model. Watch what happens when I bring this over to here, okay? Okay. See how snug? See how perfect that is? Now, it may not be matching this perfectly because if you want this to be perfect, you'll have to make this um, 192 by 80 by 80 instead of 78. Okay. You can do that. You will be giving yourself a little bit more uh, headroom. Um, and if it's just better for you to do that for the sake of you just want everything to snap, go for it. It's fine. I'm just showing you what they say is the exact dimensions. And as you can see, and come in here, you see that effect right there, how the sides and the top are kind of warping in and out from the BSP and the 3D model. Basically, that shows you that your model is sharing the exact same 3D space as the other model. And that's the effect that you get. So have you ever seen this in games where their LODs for some reason are still there while the 3D model, the real one, is being shown? Like, for instance, Skyrim. One of the biggest uh, glitches they had in the original one was if you look towards the mountains, okay, if you're near Whiterun and you're going past Whiterun to the tower where you meet the first dragon, you look up at the uh, mountains and you'll see this effect happening. And that's because those models are in the same exact spot and they're the same shape. However, they are a low poly version. Now, modders had to fix that because LODs, the whole point of them is to make sure that they pop in and pop out at the right moment, as well as keeping the game optimized. A lot of people don't seem to understand that concept. The whole point is you want to fool the player that what you're seeing as they walk away is the same model, right? This is what Nanite actually could pull off in Unreal Engine 5. However, in older engines, you had to use LODs. So you have to make it look very close to what it is. If you don't do it right, that's what we call eyesore. That's what we call pop in. Okay. You might have these models like quickly change right in front of your face. You shouldn't do that. 
you should understand that LODs are for distance. And after a certain amount of distance, when you want to optimize the best you can, but you still want to have it look like it's the same model and you won't really notice it as you get farther away, that's what you do. You have to make sure you measure that. You have to make sure as a player with every piece, you see exactly what the distance should be. And that should work for all models after that. Basically, everything should be able to change at the right time. But this is what that effect is, okay? This is what happens when you have it perfectly scaled. So now you know that anything you use with BS pre, uh, BSPs in here will match your 3D models. And because the grid, again, is a power of two, and I have it started at eight, it's the same spacing in the grid, right? Now, it may not have like, you know, 16 of these in each square. That's fine. I'm not worried about it because here's the square right here for these equals that same big square of 16 okay because they're eight right so it's eight <laughs> it's the same thing so that's all you have to do and you have to make sure things are obviously snap you know it's kind of hard to see with this but and you can change it if you want to and they will still fit okay so if i made this again like i said before 80 by 80 by 192 it would snap perfectly but it will still fit because all it's doing is just making the square is smaller, but it's still snapping to the power of two. See, these lines stay there. And that's it. That's the concept. It's really that simple. And even if you use it for old game engines or new ones, it doesn't matter. Once you learn how to do this, all of your models should fit perfectly. You know, but I, like I said, keep in mind, you want to go by any dimensions that the developer or um, whoever else is telling you, hey, look, this is what it is, right? So this is, again, something that I will keep here for a few moments. I'll stop talking. Uh, and you can take a look at, take a screenshot if you want. But the, in the description, I'm going to put the mod DB link, but I'm also going to put a link from one of my Google Drives to the same file in case it goes down. Um, now, I don't know how long it's going to last. I just advise anyone who gets this, share it as much as you can, because <laughs> once it's gone, it's gone. So here's the units. You can take a look. Okay, so hopefully it gives you enough time. If you want to, you know, freeze the video, feel free. But that's it. That's the concept. And once you learn how to do this, you can do it in any game engine. It's not hard. So hopefully this is uh, very informative for you. Um, if you liked it, please share, like, subscribe, or not. Either way. Um, and if you find anything wrong with this, feel free to share it. I always like input. Um, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. I don't always see all my comments. So do understand if I don't always get back to you, that's probably why. Um, but if you have any questions or you'd like to see tutorials on anything else, please let me know. I will be starting a website soon as well as a donation pool for those who would like to donate. And if people feel that they would be interested in watching me model live on a stream, please let me know. Uh, I see a lot of people doing that. However, you know, I don't always have a lot of time to do it. Uh, so if I am to do it, I just want to make sure that people would be interested enough, you know. Um, either way, I'll catch you guys later.